In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use a sequencer object to compare a variable to multiple values instead of using multiple integer compare objects. So, in this demo map I've set up here, uh, when we spawn, we have this panel in front of us which will set a random number to a value between 1 and 10. And we also have our HUD settings here to show us our random number in the top left, so we can see it change. Over here, when we use this panel, it'll detect which random number we have, what value it is, and spawn us a weapon according to what number it was. So 1, we get a chain gun, 2, we get a combat shotgun, 3 is a sh super shotgun, and so on. So when we test this, we get a new random number of 7, come over to our center panel, and we get a lightning gun. Now before we change this to a sequencer, I want to point out in the top we are using 3.18% of our objects and 4.13% of our memory. So let's go over to my other demo map and I'll show you how I have this set up with the sequencer. This is the same exact map same panels and same HUD settings and random number. But this time we're using a sequencer instead of all of those compare objects. Right away you can see that our object account uh, object amount is lower and our memory is too. This may not seem like a lot, but we can add 18 more objects to this map than we can the other. So if you're hitting your object account limit, like I do in some of my cooperative maps, then this is a more memory, or less memory intensive way of testing an integer. And this actually works the exact same. So we get a new random number from our first panel. Come over to our central panel in the middle of the room and it spawns us a plasma rifle. So let's see how to do this with a sequencer. I'm going to delete all of this here and rebuild it. So now we just have an empty panel and our weapon spawns. So let's add our sequencer back in from flow. And when we use this panel drag it to our sequencer and we change our index. This is very important. The indexer, the index for a sequencer is the order of connections we connect from our sequencer to our next objects. So in our index op, uh, properties we go to our index variable here and hold our options button and swap variable constant and changes to our random number. When we use the button on our panel, we also want to signal our sequencer to start our sequence. Before we continue on, we want to change our sequencer properties. This repeat sequence will repeat a sequence after the sequencer reaches the end of its indexes and we can set this to false, it doesn't much matter in our case because we're going to change the index every time before we actually signal the sequencer to start. This next one is very important. We'll want to set this to true. We only want our sequencer to signal one output per input. And this shared sequence really doesn't matter in our case, but we can set it to false as well. So before we continue on from here, I need to mention that we need to connect everything at this point forward in order. So when we make our first index, we need to connect to our first object. So if we want our in integer to be 1 and we need to test it to 1, we need to connect it to the very first thing. So we grab a on sequencer signal event from our sequencer and connect it to our first spawn object. 
Now if we test for 2, it's going to be index 2 when we run our sequencer. So every new signal we make is going to increase our index by 1. And our third is going to be our third index, of course. Now there's something else very important here. If I delete this first sequencer signal event, what was now index 2 now becomes 1, and what was index 3 now becomes 2. Everything has been moved up 1, because this is the only index that we have here that can be first. So if I want to reconnect our first spawn object, I actually need to delete both of these and reconnect it from the beginning because everything has to be connected in order. So I'm going to reconnect the rest of these spawn, obje spawn objects together and I'll meet you when I'm done. Alright, I've connected all of our weapon spawns back to our sequencer in order. So let's run through this logic really quick. When we use our panel, we're going to change our index to the value of our random variable. We're going to signal our sequencer, and that sequencer will then spawn us our correct weapon. So if our random variable is equal to 1, it's going to spawn us a chain gun. If it is equal to 2, it's going to spawn us a combat shotgun, just like we did before with our integer compares, only this time we're using less objects and less memory. So let's test this map and see if it works it's still the same. I'm just going to leave our random number at 1, come over here, and it spawns us a chain gun. We now have 8. This spawned us our plasma rifle again. Everything is working. Before I end this video, I want to mention one big caveat to using this system. Since we can't have an index lower than 1, it always starts at index 1. We can't have index 0, we can't have index negative 1. We can't use this to compare negative numbers. So if you're going to use this, you need to plan on using all positive numbers in whatever you are testing. So I'm not saying that this system is the be-all, end-all to comparing integers, as it has that huge drawback, but I am saying it is a more uh, efficient way of using objects and memory in your map. Alright, go use this to great effect in your own maps, and thanks for watching.